Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for sticking around through the break. My name is Kyle Corvus Crow, joined at the desk today by Joshua Fekes Quest as we are ready to get into our second semifinal of the day in our last best of three series, as it's going to be Robert Morris University taking on Illinois Urbana Champaign. This is going to be interesting. Urbana Champaign, they are undefeated right now. The only team in the semifinals uh, coming to uh, Southern California, California that are undefeated right now. So that is huge for them. Ronald Morris University, yeah, they've, uh, they're have they not obviously not undefeated. They're only nothing. I was like, just said Urbana Champaign, the only undefeated team. But um, Robert Morris University, they have a long legacy of collegiate esports. And I say that because collegiate esports is relatively young. You want to talk about the pioneers with the vision of, of getting scholarships. It's Robert Morris University. Let's look at Synodic. He's been on this team for a few years now. He was yes. actually back in DreamHack. Austin Dreamhack, last time CSL, uh, well actually, uh, last time CSL had a uh, championship in the United States, last year being an open invitational in Toronto. This year, we're finally back in the United States. Sionotic is back, so he has experience on the live stage with CSL here. He's been around the block. A rags to riches story started, uh, from what I hear, from around the talk around. Uh, low silver, and then yeah. gotten to high elo. So, inspiration for uh, sad league players like me <laughs> so that's always uh you know not everyone loves the underdog story well a lot of people may be considering robert morris the underdogs today i mean illinois a team that's undefeated in regular season play that's pretty intense and has to be intimidating there are a lot of people's favorites to win i know we talked to uh erase here on the desk from victorious sfu he called this a quick 2-0 and so with that we're gonna get into picks and bands and see how quick these games are going to be. It is the pick and ban and singed immediately taken off the table. Going to be banned out by RMU. They answer back with a fizz out of Illinois. Zaker is one of those champion, uh, one of those players that plays those kind of off-meta picks in the top lane. Uh, the singe being one of them. I think he also plays Teemo. I don't know if we're going to be seeing co a competitive Teemo here. We're going to see what happens as we do see a Swain locked, uh, uh, taken away. Kha'Zix being the last ban for the first banning phase of Robert Morris University. We're going to see the Kaisa being taken away as well for the last ban of Urbana Champagne. That's going to prompt a Morgana lock-in, which I'm surprised we did not see in any of the matches between SFU versus U uh, UBC. Morgana, it's a wild. Yeah, it is. Morgana is a very prominent pick in the bot lane right now, as is Caitlyn. So definitely want to take that those both off the table for uh, somehow not let Robert Morse University have both of those is what I mean. Yeah, so Caitlyn Morgana is such a strong combination. They do not want to see that one come through. You almost have to pick the Caitlyn if you see the Morgana locked in on the other side of things. So no surprise there that they're going to secure that one. Support potentially on the table here. Jungle as well. Both viable options. They do... Take a look at that Scion and say that one, a pretty big pick, a heavy priority for the top laner of Robert Morris University, actually. So it's, it's a takeaway pick here. Technically, we have seen Columbia College rain this one the most. Scion, mid. Scion could go mid. It is technically a flex pick of the way the meta is working right now. We're going to see what Urbana Champagne is, uh, are going to run with that one, but they're going to lock in the Cho'Goth because that's one of the big benefits of picking that Scion is that if you run him mid, you throw the enemy team completely off. They already showed their top laner more than likely being a Cho'Goth. Varus being hovered over. He got a little bit of change to his Blight, so his Piercing Arrows actually, uh, you can activate the Blight, and the Piercing Arrows do a lot more damage now. Well, they're going to try to pick that one up for themselves as an answer to the Caitlyn. Get a little bit of the range back on the board for themselves. That means Zach, the jungle option over on the side of Illinois. They're going to grab it and feel pretty good as they do push us now into the second round of bans. That's Trundle coming off the bat first. They do not want to see that. They know the jungle option is still there. And with a Trundle off the table and an Anivia out here, that's really tricky to deal with Scion because both of his two hardest counters have just been taken away. In fact, I would have guessed the Anivia ban would have come last in the rotation here from Illinois. I guess they're not going to prioritize that threat too much. Because, yeah, the, the walls are not going to be there. You still have Orn, who can still technically have an, immovable, uh, 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 an impassable object there. And we're going to see what the last ban for Robert Morris is, as Vladimir going to be the last ban out from Urbana Champagne. Remember, this is Urbana Champagne at Illinois. Their parent, uh, parent team being Illinois in the Big Ten. 
and they scrim each other. So they have uh, they have insights about how the meta is shifting and for the better of it as well. Because remember, Illinois from the Big Ten, they're in the LA Championship Finals. They are one uh, of the top eight. The top eight teams, and now Urbana Champagne, they want to show that their JV team is also uh, also can uh, keep up with them, except on the JV side of things. They're going to lock in that rise in the mid lane. Well, 14 and zero through their games, yes. undefeated thus far. That's a pretty good way to make that statement, but doesn't amount to anything unless they can get here and now. And I would be surprised to see this locked in. Delighted, but surprised. I don't know if it, yeah, turned over to Cassiopeia. And with the rise locked in for Urbana Champagne, that does guarantee that a Scion is going to go top lane. They're not going to see Scion go support, that is for sure. At least not in high competitive play. Sure. And this is, a, you know, a, a must see, a must win game for both these teams. Uh, best, it's a, a semifinals, best of three. Winner going to go on to the finals to face SFU, Simon Fraser University. You want to pull Just out. had a hard fought win. They did. Went to game number three. Neither of these teams want to go to a game number three. They want to go to just finish out game number two. They need to bring their, their best foot forward. Skarner on the side of Arbor, uh, Robert Morris University going to try to bring them over to that best foot. I mean, we, we saw Skarner absolutely popping off last series and played really well, especially in tandem with the Chogoth. His composition is actually not too terribly different than what we saw out of the victorious SFU, but now look at that. The Braum. Lock in for the support for Urbana Champagne means they're going to be rounding out that composition, and it is tanky, let me tell you. A lot of front line from Urbana Champagne and a lot of engage, too. You have Zach, you have Scion. Realm Warp can, ha can actually be an engage with Braum as well. If you want to go that route, is if you want to go that aggressive route. Now on the other side, there's quite a bit of tank also. It's Skarner and Chogoth. Three tanks compared to two, of course. You, that does mean that you have... Uh, another kind of pseudo off damage support with that Morgana could turn the tides in team fights for Robert Morris University. They'd like to be able to make that one happen. It's a lot to negate from this Braum shield with just the Varus piercing arrow. Cassio and some of her fun events as well. So, Timmy Tommy, it'll be a pivotal role in keeping Yabba alive and okay there as we do just settle in to this good old three minute delay. No stranger to League of Legends and broadcasting. So as we are pulling ourselves back up on your screen here, my name is Kyle Corvus Pro. I'm joined at the desk today by Joshua Feck as Quest. And we've already seen one very exciting semifinal. Went the full distance in all three games. This time, we'll see if anyone can make it a 2-0. We'll see if we get a little further down the rung of things. and what these compositions are going to be able to pull off. There are a few tech issues in that first best of three. I think we figured most of those out. At yeah. least I hope we did. We're going to see as we get into game number one pretty soon. There's a lot of potential in these team fights. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, Urbana Champagne, they drafted a massive team fight. Engage, get in your face, kill, keep Caitlyn safe, let her just peck away to everybody. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the other side, on Robert Morris University, a lot of catch potential between Morgana and Skarner alone. Not to mention, you do have... Uh, the Varus ultimate as well, yes. rupture for Chogoth. There's a lot of potential for catching on the side of Robert Morris University. CC's insane, yeah. If they can catch either Rise or Caitlyn out on uh, Urbana Champagne, that's half of the power cut away from their team fights. Yeah, it's certainly something that they're going to be able to try to find throughout. And, you know, the, the targets are definitely a little weaker on the edge of Urbana Champagne. Rise is a little slippery, but you can blow him up if you catch him pretty easily. Caitlyn old glass cannon type deal that yeah. just chair through that really quickly but Sion, Zach, and Braum I mean what a front line what kind of peel they can bring to the table there that's going to be massive to try to overcome. There is so much, uh, yeah so much front line for Urbana Champagne but they also have a nice disengage. The Braum does bring a very nice disengage with a glacial fissure so if they if uh, anybody on the side of Robert Morris is able to break through the front line somehow of Urbana Champagne does have that sort of uh, reprieve with that glacial fissure, give Caitlyn the, me uh, the means to get out into safety, because that's going to be the big target. That's who you want to catch. Urbana Champagne, they have targets painted on them. They're blocked by big towers in front, but yes. if you can get through them, then you have a very good chance in these team fights and objective control if you're Robert Morris. Not to mention, they have Cassiopeia and Varus, very quick at taking objectives like Baron sure. and Drake as well. So if there's a little bit of breathing room, you have Chogoth there too. 
piece that thing down, you're going to be able to get a little bit of an advantage there. We'll see how it all does pan out when we get into the game. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple of quick sponsors to you know, dole out a little bit of thanks to. So as always, want to give a huge shout out to Twitch. Thank them for their continued support. Events that the CSL is involved in, like PAX East and West, are here at Huntington Beach for our own finals. We wouldn't be what we are today without their continued help and support. So be on the lookout for cool ways to get involved with Twitch in the near future. You can do that twitch.tv, likely where you're watching now, or uh, twitter.com slash twitch, facebook.com slash twitch. Want to give a huge shout out to Juice Batter. You can see him right here at the edge of the desk. Long story short, they last six times as long. They charge twice as fast, so don't get caught in a situation where you're about to take the last shot and nothing happens because your battery's died. Stick with Juice, JuiceBattery.com to get all the information about where you can find this wonderful product. And uh, of course, last but not least, want to give a shout out to iBuyPower. These guys have been instrumental. They've gotten us all the PCs we need for this weekend. Everything being played here at the CSL today is being played on an iBuyPower machine. That of course means Dota, CSGO are open tournaments and uh overwatch was just happening yeah overwatch Fortnite's out there and then uh you know we got the league of legends as well and speaking of league of legends ladies and gentlemen we're in game number one a lot of grouping coming out from robert morris university i think they're going to be looking for an invade here but look at the grouping from urbana champagne yeah they're all they hanging out and maybe thinking of the same thing here hiding out in a way just trying to get somebody on the deep roam for that ward it's Pretty clever, actually. We'll see whether or not anyone falls for this trap because they can just easily avoid it by roaming into the front side and dropping a ward on blue, and they're good. It's going to be a collision course happening sometime soon. No, it looks like... Nah, they just backed up. They got yeah, the ward. Robert Morris, they're going to be backing up here, yeah. So don't want to get any into uh, into t into the, uh, at the uh, rift this quick into the game. They want to just play it a little bit more calm here. Still grouping, though, from Urbana Champagne, though, Zakar, uh, Zakar, I should say. Went up to the t going up to the top side. I'm not going to worry about any more shenanigans here. And with that, everybody just backing off to where they need to go. Looking at that, we have an Infernal Drake first on the docket today, and likely going to mean a lot of chaos building up and around the bottom side of the map as things do get to go in that direction before too long. And you know, we have the champions to really facilitate that as well for some early game aggression. So. Would not be too surprised to see that one in the working somewhere. And Whoa. wait, did we just see? I think Morgana took that. There's no way. Morgana stole it. Morgana did indeed steal the blue buff with the dark binding. Are you kidding me? What a cheeky play coming out from Synodic there. This dude really just set back uh, the, the Jungle Boy. And we talked about Synodic. He was, he's been on this Robert Morris University squad for years now. At least, uh, at least two years because he was back in Austin, Texas back in 2016 for DreamHack when CSO was there. He he knows how this is how this goes. Not a stranger to you know, the high level competitive strategies. Exploiting that now, taking that blue buff away from Jungle Boy. He's a manalist champion on Zac. Doesn't absolutely need that, but man, he needs Wants those, it, yeah. he needs those like that ex CDR. Those experience points. He needs a CDR, needs those experience points more so. Absolutely. And with that too, Morgana Early on, just a binding factory, right? That's what you want to do is binding, 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 binding. Having that blue buff, insane. That's got to feel so good because you can just throw this thing out, not worry about the mana costs. And that was a team effort from the beginning. Everybody escorted down so he could drop that ward at the right time and just make that last shot. And I mean, they caught Urbana Champagne completely unawares on that. Very impressive play by Synodic overall. Robert Morris University slowing down the jungle of Jungle Boy Zach, which is uh, something that's pretty pivotal. Considering he likes to gank as fast as possible with that slingshot. We talked about earlier, there's no tracker's knife anymore. It's easier for a Zach to gank earlier because there's not as much vision to be thrown down anymore. So he's going to be a little bit stunted in that one, but he's still level three. He's still farming up. As you can see, there's uh, still two uh, two camps over on the side of Shockwave. Two uh, two camps up, I should say, over on sure. Shockwave. Yeah, well, I mean, we haven't even finished the first jungle clear in its entirety. So, you know, we talked earlier too. We touched on this. The Infernal Drake, a big target early, having Jungle Boy on the back foot feel pretty good for Robert Morris University if they can continue this pressure. Now, obviously, the laning phase, not a whole lot to read into yet. It's a 
handful of CS, no more than five in any given direction right now, so nothing that we can really make heads or tails of, but look at this. Kerbic in the mid lane, using that unsealed spell book to swap back over to teleport here. So maybe Jungle something boy. cheeky coming up before too long as Jungle Boy really not having the best of luck in this gank against he's Nova Cloak. He's doing that by himself. Zaker's like, all right. Yeah, uh, you have fun. Yeah, yeah, you just do that. Uh, I got a wave over here. I'm just gonna farm up this one, so. Yeah, I need the EXP, so if you can go push yeah. by yourself and not yeah. be in EXP range, that'll be great. That's essentially what happened, just keeping uh, keeping Nova Cloak on the uh, on edge up on the top there. but. Yeah, Kerbic, he is using that, use that teleport, get into the mid lane. He doesn't have heal anymore. He does have the flash, of course, so not going to be missing out on any CS. Quite ahead on CS in the mid lane, actually, despite uh, this recent patch, 8.8. .8, actually did get nerfed, uh, uh, Rise, I should say, got a little bit of nerf to the mana consumption on his E. So, yeah, it takes a lot more mana. Has to be a lot more careful of how he uses that. But with that being said, he has a tier and a dark seal now. I don't think he's going to be having too many mana issues that much. No, yeah, after he gets out of the tier stacking phase too, he's going to be feeling really good on just his chances and everything of the like. So, especially if he can push in, keep Sly Cat down, Cassio, somebody you never want to let get rolling and very important to maintain a stifling advantage over that money. I mean, you saw it, game number two versus UBC and SFU. UBC got out in the lead with uh, that Cassio there. It ended up being the only game they won. Cassio is a very strong mid lane pick. Does give the uh, objective control quite well. Again, you can take Drakes, you can take Baron very quickly. But overall, just a very strong DPS champion. Very great in team fights as well with the petrifying gaze. If you land him, especially in the front of everybody's face, which look at the team of Urbana Champagne. They're, whole, they're built to get into your face, front forward. So having a, a, a Cassiopeia, the uh, uh, petrifying gaze, could be very advantageous turning these team fights around. They would relish the chance to pull that off very well, Sly Cat. He needs to be the mechanical hero to make that one happen, and the circumstances have to be right, but if it all lines up, they'd be happy to receive it in the right capacity. Top lane, favoring Zaker just a little bit here as time is rolling on. He's got 11 CS to an advantage. Was level six beforehand. Nova Cloak just now catching up to have the feast, but trade should start going back in the way of Nova Cloak a little bit here as the mana consumption of Scion here is a little high and it's not the same story for Cho'Goth right now. He's gotta be careful of ganks though. Not that he's in danger of one, but he doesn't have the vision set up to really know either way. Aggression on that bot side. Synodic is caught out trying to establish vision or clear vision. Might have a little bit of a skirmish in the jungle here, though. Oh, oh the binding! Nice on the miasma. The binding connects. It's first blood going down to Sly Cat. Maybe more to follow here. Yabba's on the sidelines, and it looks to be turned around now by the likes of Urbana Champagne in Illinois. They're just pushing everybody right back on through. Says we're not too worried. We did give up the first blood, and it's on the mid laner. That's what's going to hurt. But they did force a flash out, actually, from Leopard. He got a little skittish there said, hey, I can't be a part of this one anymore, guys. <laughs> I think my mom's calling me. I got to go home. <laughs> no matter if you get the first blood if, or if you're the team being uh, doing the catching out, you still have to be careful of your foot placement uh, if you're an ADC. Leopard getting a little bit too close to comfort. Like you said, needed to uh, flash out there. But Sly Cat, uh, Sly Cat, I should say, getting that first blood by a, uh, via a very nice Dark Binding from Ooh. Morgana, Synodic. Long range Dark Binding onto Kerbic, and with that Miasma down, you can't use Flash, which may have been pivotal. Oh, Speaking of Flash, though, got yeah. one in the mid lane. Right out and away, but look at this. Here is Shockwave wanting to come in. Gonna flash in for that one, and looky there, Cell he's division. gonna find it. Not gonna be enough. The Cell Division Kerbic there, turning it back around. It gets the kill onto Sly Cat. They dove too hard, not realizing that Zach would have the passive, and maybe not on the same page there. Sly Cat was uh, not in the best of positions. So trading back that kill in the mid lane, you have to respect the cell division because if you if you can't just flash for a cell division, especially when it's so close to turret, you can't flash for a cell division with a full health rise there in your face and all your cooldowns blown. That is something that you know, usually doesn't play out very well. Didn't play out very well this time around either, obviously. As, like I said, a kill did go back into Kerbeck's favor in that mid lane. Gotta show some respect to the Cell Division, to Kerbeck. Oh, maybe 
trying to hang out, get a little bit of a in your face pressure down here from Timmy Tommy and Yabba, both those guys. Stunning up Sonotic would be good here. The Dark Binding not gonna connect onto too much here, just gets a minion. Makes his day a little worse as a hail of arrows lands on him and probably died in a great amount of fear. <laughs> I can't move and now arrows are falling from the sky. What do you think? That do? would be extremely scary. As Sinotic, he needs to be very careful here. Yeah, Timmy flash Tommy, right at the edge in. of the Dark Binding. That's gonna be the Glacial Fisher coming down as well. Yabba gets that kill credit. And that is two kills now, one in the lead for themselves. We see that Yaba and Timmy Tommy, they are going to go try to establish some uh, vision around this Baron. Uh, not Baron, I'm sorry, the Infernal Drake. That is the Infernal Drake first. So that is going to be a priority for both teams. Something that they definitely want to pick up and would get the direction moving the right way for either team, they'd be happy to receive it. So with that, as we are taking stock of just where the game is as a whole. Hey, Banner Command! Already, love it, first item, Zaker, necessary on Scion. You don't pick Scion unless you build the Banner of Command. It's just, you know, something complimentary. That was, something that was absent the entire time of the SFU and UBC match. You know what, I don't mind, it's refreshing. Get a couple different little play styles going on in here. For sure, and there was a lot of different play styles in, those, in that. Uh, Just the in that first, series alone, right? Yeah, the first series alone. Aggressive junglers, aggressive top laners. But yeah, once again, no, no banner command until now. We have a gank on the bot side. They though. want to find it. Shockwave is here. Not gonna flash again for this one. Oh, the one, chain. Yeah, chain of corruption landing, and Shockwave just didn't seem to be on the same page for that one. He was already on the way back out. Did decide that it wasn't the biggest deal for himself there, and so just moving, snooping along, everything. Where it should be for most of these guys. It's unfortunate for the support now of Robert Morris University. Synodic is the only one down just a little bit here. Well, with all this pressure building around that dragon, just a tick here. They want to be able to get into this one. Timmy Tommy getting the clear. Just making sure that he's not in any danger as far as that. Uh, Ward coverage goes as he does look to find this one. We have a gank coming into the mid lane. They're going to get in onto Slycat. Nothing he can do to save himself on that one. And he goes straight down. Nice gank by Jungle Boy taking advantage of Slycat. He had no flash available to get out of that. So even if he were on the right side of town, honestly, I believe Jungle Boy and Kerbeck can actually tower dive at this point. But taking advantage of the mid lane, Slycat having that lack of mobility. Urbana Champagne is trying to start up this Infernal Drake. First Drake of the game. They're going to be able to pick that one up. That's a sec. I believe that's another Infernal Drake coming up afterward. I think I just saw that uh, turn over to the Infernal Drake symbol, and it is. So that is going to be two Infernal Drakes for first up for this best, first best, uh, the second best of three of the day. Really looks like RMU had some nice opening strategies, but here in just the laning uh, phase of the game and sort of a lot of the reactionary play. Start to feel pretty good for the likes of Illinois. They're showing why they were able to get out with this undefeated run on through. It's they find commanding leads early and they push on pretty hard and it's starting to look really nice for themselves. They're trying to get in onto Yabba here. That's Chain of Corruption's Chain of coming corruption. down. It only finds Timmy Soon Tommy, but Soul Shackle is there. Meanwhile, stopwatch through the elastic slingshot as Kerbeck is on the back line. It's turning into a full-on fight. Nova Cloak is here, but Sonotic already dead. They suppress him and pull him on back. Kerbeck has to use both summoners, but it's still going to die here anyway. At what cost, though? Timmy Tommy still doing some frontline damage as Jungle Boy as well. We'll have the Cell Division. Maybe can't get out of this one, but likely with the Flash will get himself out and away in one piece. And they all back it on off, feeling okay about themselves this time around. It's a kill for a kill, pound for pound there. Kerbeck went down. They take it. They're going to feel fine. Sinotic with his second death of the game, and Meanwhile, Zaker in the top side just been unattended, just been able to push through this entire time. And he has the banner of command minion as well, so he is going to push this down relatively fast. There's not going to be too much keeping him from uh, taking that turret. And yeah, it does go down, so he's going to be able to pick that one up. And first turret of the game going over to Urbana Champagne. Yeah, no, they definitely gonna feel good about taking that one for themselves. And if in First to a lot of these advantages, first to the Drake, first to the Towers. They didn't quite take first blood, 
but they still did end up with a strong showing. Returning around on the gank, and they're getting the kills where they need to. Kerbeck and Yabba are both getting into a point where they can be strong. One on to Jungle Boy. Doesn't hurt. It's probably not the best, but they're going to feel great about that one, too. That kills a kill in the end. They do want to keep the keep that in their favor. Urbana Champagne, they have the first turret. They have the first Drake. They have a lead in the kills, which translating to a lead in gold as well. Robert Morris University, they're trying to make some action happen on that bot side, but it didn't work out in their favor. It didn't that last exchange, but it is sort of in vain because they had to leave Zaker alone in that top side, and that allows Urbano Champagne to just take out the turret. You cannot leave a banner command up, uh, banner commanded up no. Sion alone by himself. No, that's the kind of thing. Needs supervision at all times. It's uh, like a toddler. You leave it alone, it's destructive. <laughs> Everything you own is just rubble You're by the, the time you The first person turn. I've ever heard si uh, refer to Sion as a toddler. Well, the, the, the canyon minion, really. But yeah, Sion in general just buffing oh. it up as well. Yeah, yeah, okay, my bad. No, I mean, it's, it's yeah, yeah, they're hand in hand, complementary forces. <laughs> it's a yin and the yang of top lane pressure. Yeah. And it ebbs and it flows and it builds. It's got balance. So and this, another potential gank oh. on in. It's a nice dark binding, but it's not going to do too much as he's able to bounce out. Now, Teleport is finished channeling. From Zaker, he knows he can leave the top lane and feel okay. They try to get it on a Kerbic, but he does All of these resources. able to get out with the Quicksilver Sash. He's already got the Skarner tax paid, and meanwhile, that's going to be the Glacial Fissure coming down. Shockwave going to be out of that one, but they may turn a kill around now. Maybe two. This Yabba and Timmy Tommy very low. They find a couple for themselves, but lose Sly Cat in the process. Four that to five in kills. And Better Zaker, than I expected for RMU. I thought so too. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Zaker even uh, teleported down. Nova Cloak stayed in that top side to just try to push back on that wave that's been pushing on the top side that entire time. A lot of resources used. You can kind of say that was actually sloppy by both sides. It wasn't really a true catch. It was just more like who can make the worst mistake and pay for it more. Well, it with like. that, I think uh, the worst mistake of the two fell to Urbana Champagne. Illinois not yes. doing what they needed to to carry that one through. It's going to give Nova Cloak a lot of time unattended in this tower. Uh, <laughs> the problem is he is so weak right now that, <laughs> you know, he might not even finish this thing off. Once the minions get there, it's going to be pretty tough because his minions are going to shift aggro. And meanwhile, Jungle Boy onto AK-47 Leopard didn't have the Black Shield in time. Sonata, a good mechanical player, but did not lock that one down in time. And it's another kill. Rise just keeps roaming down. Kerbeck is anywhere but the mid lane. This is the big meta in the mid lane is push your, uh, push your lane and then just roam. You can do that so well with Rise. He clears waves so quickly, has roam warp, now it looks like, as I say that, Robert Morse University taking that turret on the top side. Going to have a little noodle fight here. Yep. The good old uh, Spongebob narrator. Three hours later. <laughs> top lane tower finally goes down. That's pretty much how top lane is. And Nova Cloak's going to be able to walk on out of that one in one piece. Feeling pretty good about just showing up. He's 1-0-0 over 0-0-1 on Zaker. So effectively, if you just look at it, even in CS, and he took the tower, he's, he's winning top lane in a sense here. Obviously lost his tower first, but... It's not anything really to do with him, and I have to wonder too. Zaker just teleporting out in a way, kind of left the door back open there. So, all in all, we got the another Infernal Drake spawn, and then about 30 seconds or so here. Not too worried about finding that one for Urbana Champagne. They know it's going to be on the docket, they know they have the pressure. This is where the onus really needs to fall a lot on Robert Morris. They got to find a way to get in contention for this thing. And that's why Yaba and uh, Timmy Tommy are staying oh, in the hold man. on. man, look at Jungle Boy. He's everywhere with this Zack, and it's a nice turnaround to get away from the Petrifying Gaze. Destroys. Means Kerbeck just comes in. Mechanically played that one to a T. Of course, you face away from Cassio. You're only slowed. You do not get stunned by the Petrifying Gaze. Very Medusa-esque, because they're going to try to lock up Jungle Boy. They do force the Let's Bounce pretty early on. So that's going to at least help kind of deter that one. The dragon should be able to deal some damage onto this, but they are just shredding through this thing, and there's no chance of a steal there for the likes of Robert Morris. So it's the second Infernal Drake, and the lead and the favor and the flow all maintained squarely in the hands of Illinois here. Urbana Champagne, they are doing a great job controlling this map. We saw right before that Drake, Yaba 12 and Timmy Tommy were able to push up that wave on the bot side. Keep the pressure down there and make sure that they have control of that bot lane and its entrances. And now on the top side. And this is one thing about Nova Cloak, I will say. Going on that Cho'Goth, he does have an answer for 
a, uh, in a, a banner command minion, you can just eat it. Yep. Which is something you, uh, you, it right up. Yeah, you don't really have that much else. There's no uh, mini dematerializers on the side of Robert Morris University. But what they do have now, Nova Cloak, he decided to build his own uh, banner of command. He's going to have some sort of answer to that now yeah. outside of just eating it, the feast. The Righteous Glory 2. Going to be a couple good items for himself there. And be feeling... Pretty decent about his chances up in this top lane. The problem is the rest of the game is just getting away from Robert Morris in the worst of places. I know they're only about 1,500 gold down and the towers are even, but the two Infernal Drakes and really what's most worrying is the fact that Kerbeck is really just starting to get rolling here. That's what to me says, okay, you know, we need a couple more advantages than Nova Cloak. Also, Jungle Boy with his elastic slingshots, he's everywhere he needs to be at the right time. Like this guy lane. is insanely good. And paired up with Kerbeck, that bot lane tower never stood a chance. Kurt Beck is being, going very hard right now in this game. Six stacks on his Dark Seal. Already has the Rod of Ages stacking up as well. So going to be scaling into this mid game yeah. very heavily. Now one thing that did change is the tier, uh, the tier of the Goddess. You can build into Archangel Staff now, but the, the, uh, the conversion of mana to, uh, to ability power was reduced from 3% to 1. That is a pretty huge nerf coming out as we see two powered up minions right now on that top side for Urbana Champagne. They are going to be having a very heavy push. There are two banner commands, one on Scion, one on Braum. This is Oof. getting ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's a little much. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're going to try to get in on the curb back here. Shockwave knows he probably still has a flash up and Lo and behold, Jungle Boy Elastic slingshotting in again. This guy's jungle presence is insane. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Glacial Fish are going to come down. That's actually flashed into it by Shockwave, trying to pull somebody back, but he actually gets pulled back himself. Let's bounce on in, and here is the top lane. Nova Cloak joining the fight. That means that it's going to be a kill onto Timmy Tommy. How much Slide else can cat. they find? They're trying to find a little bit more. Kerbeck in a little bit of trouble here, and look at this. Zaker was a little too low, a little too slow to get into things, and meanwhile, Nova Cloak is on a killing spree for himself. That's two kills for the Cho'Gath, one They're for Slycat. The and they feel like they can take this Baron out in a way. It's only Scion and Yaba to stop them. Zaker, Cassiopeia, they might be able to. This is pretty big. You know, we saw a lot of trouble build by a team that was hasty on the Baron last series in the first game, nonetheless. We may see a repeat of that, but AK-47 Leopard is on the way up. He wants to find and catch out and kill Yaba here. Synodic in some trouble, needs to keep his health bar. Very careful, that Baron's going down. It's gonna go into the hands of potentially, yes, Robert Morris find it. They get the credit. Zaker's trying to get out of this one. He'll have to flash, but he is knocked up. The flash comes through anyway. And meanwhile, the ace in the hole, not gonna find a kill, but does take a little bit of chunk down now. Sockwave and Synodic both so low. That was a close one, but they did edge it out, and Robert Morris find a way to put themselves back into this game with a gold lead. One of the big differences that we saw when UBC tried that early game, or early Baron last time in a, in a game number one, the, best of, the first best of three, the first semifinal, that they didn't have Cassiopeia to help yeah, them out with that. Sure. Robert Morris University, they do. They were looking at those games too. They may have thought that, hey, we can get that, we can get that advantage early on. Let's have a Cassiopeia to supplement that. Take that Baron down as quick as possible. Throw the Miasma down, throw the Noxious Blast down, and just start spamming Twin Fangs out. You can take a Baron down so quickly, even without Mountain Drake, as there are no Drakes on the side of Robert Morris, but they have probably the most important one right now at the moment in this game, is that Baron They're looking to use that one and even up these turrets to get that gold lead. Actually, yeah. they do have a gold lead, never mind. Now they have the gold lead, they want to start finding the turret lead as well. That Baron gives so much gold, about 1,500 on the docket there, so something they need to be careful of, and so do find themselves a tower. Gonna to keep trying to push on for more, another Drake coming up in about a minute here and that one's going to be the ocean drake all that excellent regen they'd want to find and store away for themselves meanwhile tower taking a beating but that's nothing compared to what shockwave is there's a glacial fissure coming down let's bounce is coming in but he's suppressed they pull him right out of the elastic slingshot and kill jungle boy they play him at his own game and it works well but timmy Slycat! tommy in here and here comes kerbeck they're trying to find a lot this is going to be bad for slycat he does have the shield on him and it will protect him but how long how much can they do zaker is the one that they're trying to get in onto now but he is a big tanky son of a gun and synodic has to be careful yabba on the front line of things he does not care no regard for his own personal safety as he's just there to speak 
spit out the damage and the downtown shot Ooh. is blocked by Slycat. They have to back off now. The Miasma will help, but is it going to be enough to save Sinotic? He gets a Dark Binding to save himself, Ooh. and wow, just on the edge. He does make it out in one piece. It looked like that was actually going to be turned around by Robert Morris University, but Urbana Champagne prevail. There is not enough damage thus far on the side of RMU. And with uh, Leopard not being there to be able to dish, dish out a much, that much damage, it all falls onto Slycat. And Slycat, he was staying safe as much as possible. He got hit up a little bit, was able to turn around, do, throw out his Miasma Noxious Blast with the Twin Fangs, but by that point, there was just not enough damage to back it up. So Slycat thought he was going to turn that one around, didn't happen. That's another Drake going over to Urbana Champagne. And this late game is looking very scary for them, especially if they can get the Elder Drake. Yeah, they pick up their third. It's a third Infernal spawning after this yeah. for the fourth Drake of the game. And so that's not just a luxury at this point. It is a necessity for Robert Morris University, and they're still disadvantaged as only three of this particular kind of Drake are allowed to sp spawn at any given point. So the push and the pressure and the building up from the likes of Urbana Champagne at Illinois. They've been down a couple times on the back foot this game, but they're winning the tower game. They lost one fight and it net the Baron over to the likes of RMU, but you have to wonder if that is sustainable, replicatable, if you are Robert Morris University, or if now, you know, their moment and their chance in this game is really kind of falling by the wayside and they have a lot more ground to make up. One of the big issues that Robert Morris is having right now Coincidentally, actually lies on that Cassiopeia right now because you have two adaptive helms coming out. Yeah. For Zaker and Jungle Boy, which means those twin fangs, those Noxus Blasts, they're they're going to be reduced. They're going to be mitigated by a, a pretty large margin, and that just means that if Leopard dies, that means that Robert Morris they don't have much damage output unless they can get a priority target like a uh, Yaba or even a, a Kerbic. But it's not really favoring them thus far. Having a little bit of trouble catching them out. Have to get through a big wall of Zaker, Jungle Boy, and Timmy Tommy. And it's not working out for the, in their favor thus far. There's so much protection, so much beef on the likes of Urbana Champagne here. These guys are a big old front line to chew through. They say if we can get one, maybe. They're going to try it on Braum. That's the elastic oh. slingshot in. They find Timmy Tommy, but the let's bounce comes back, and it brings Sinotic and Nova Cloak back into the fold of Urbana Champagne. The redemption comes down, but Nova Cloak's a little too late by a second and does not live. They're going to try to continue this fight as RMU does have to worry. The teleport came down, but it was not enough to save Shockwave. Meanwhile, Zaker back into the middle of things. They still want to push us out from Robert Morris University. They're going to grab themselves a tower for this one. And that'll be their prize for the day. 600 gold in the lead. Still a tower down. Still down on Dragons and only tied in kills. This has been a scrappy, scrappy game. Seesaw matchup indeed. Three turrets to four. Yeah, the, uh, the kills are even now. Urbana Champagne, every time they look like they have the advantage, it's turned back around on them. Leopard was left alive in that fight, and that turned it around for Robert Morris University into their favor. Leopard is a huge amount of power. Yeah, he's 0 2 6 right now. Those six assists do add up, though. And yeah. he still has quite a bit of farm, most on his team, actually. 9,000 in, uh, in his pocket overall. Just hit 10K with the bump of that turret. Yeah. He's about 200 gold separated from Yaba, who has four kills up on him. Two, he has two main items, and that's kind of the big power spike for the Varus. He has, obviously, he has the Empowered Q with his Blight, and you can apply those Blights now even more so with the Gwensu's Rage Blade with the Rapid Fire Cannon. It's so easy to just, uh, just pew, 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 whatever is in front yeah. of you as a Varus with that sort of build. Just don't stop. Just stay safe. Don't stop. Keep auto-attacking. Never stop auto-attacking. Throw out a Q here and there as well. You sound like a... Uh Telegraph transponder. Uh, don't stop. Yeah. <laughs> phrase stop. Phrase stop. <laughs> I love it. Just fun phonetics here on the CSL desk at Huntington Beach. Of course, you mentioned Varus and Blight Stacks. I think we talked about this in Champion Select, but a quick refresher. Of course, there were changes to Varus on 8.8 .8 with the way that his Blight Stacks operate. Some things to take into account. We'll get to that in a second. We may have a little bit of action. A building and a brewing over Whew. here. Headshots. And they're just going to back it off. I thought maybe we had a storm brewing, but it was not the case. No, just a couple headshots from Yaba. 
Do a lot of damage. Oh, no, but Timmy Tommy may be caught out. Timmy Tommy, yeah, he's in some trouble. They found this fight with them last time. He has the Glacial Fissure to knock it up, but they're just going to change targets, and Jungle Boy goes down insanely fast. The Dark Binding doesn't connect, so that maybe they Baron's can't keep this through. But yeah, Baron alive. is up and on the table, and Jungle Boy is not. They have a 35-second window where there are no smites available. And a team with Smite and a Cho'Gath, even though he does not have Beast, is going to have the advantage. Maybe they want to set up a Death Brush here. Maybe they just want to continue to try to get a pick. Nirvana Champagne scattered it out. They had a control word inside the river brush right next to the pixel. And Timmy Tommy, he's not dumb. He's going to throw in a Q before he goes in too far. Dark Binding not going to be landing on anybody. Two empowered minions from the banner commands on that yeah, top side I mean, for Nova Look Cloak. at how much time Nova Cloak has to spend over there. And two, if they can bait out his feast, having to use that killing a empowered minion he won't have it for the fights he won't have it for the baron he teleports in very aggressively close but it did give his team some time bottom the baron and now they have to decide whether or not they fight their way or try to run their way out i think the only option with this few top lane towers as they have is that fight but they've decided against it they do have the empowered recalls to get back so we're going to count down how many of these guys can get out safely that's going to be the, trying to flash in through things and now meanwhile on the back line Ivana. we have Zaker here he wants to find this one he's in the midst of them and the peel for leopard is going to be tough there's a flank the on knock the back up. Side. jungle boy is there but nova cloak already kills Zaker. they're turning around to try to get more jungle boy gets Ooh. leopard and then bounces back to his team are you kidding me yabba gets shockwave as well and now nova cloak having to flash out i think sly cat gonna go down too they may have had the baron but they're losing the fight here feck as and it is not going well for the members of robert morris university this is urbana champagne on the warpath Nova Cloak trying to buy what time he can, trying to get onto Kerbeck, but it's just not enough. The Feast is about another well, half left on the cooldown, and that means he's dead. And the only survivor is Synodic. And he cannot clear any of these waves. We see Yaba already pushing into that topside inhibitor turret. This is the result of having two Banner of Commands yeah, on your team. the redemption just for wave clear. Just for wave clear, that's all you can do. You're not going to get in the face of Yaba. There's one more wave coming up and that is still another banner of command wave coming up onto that top side yeah things going from bad to worse in this top side now it's going to be the infernal drake as well in a lot of trouble here it'll be the third one locked up unless there's some kind of miracle steal coming out jungle boy knows he can get that one for himself knows that the third infernal drake is going to be huge the flash in from synodic they're going for it they're not going to be able to find the dragon does go down Three and Infernal the flash is in vain. Yes, this is looking now all in the favor of Urbana Champagne. Sure, the gold not looking their way, but the drakes, the pressure, the towers, the map rotations, and the fights have looked to be favoring Illinois in this run. Now, Robert Morris truly on the back foot into three Infernal Drakes because these grouping up and fight situations against all of this front line just so tough to deal with. Urbana Champagne is going to be difficult to deal with no matter what because they have three Infernal Drakes right now and they will be focusing heavily onto that Elder Drake. If they get that Elder Drake, this game may be done as yeah. they take out Robert Morris's chances in game number one. Timmy Tommy and Kerbic, they're on the top side. Yeah, Nova Cloak, he's overextended. It. Nova Cloak is indeed deep into enemy territory. He's going to try to get the rupture onto Yava, but the sidestep means that Nova Cloak's fate is all but sealed. What are you Silence doing, bro? only buys him a couple seconds of time. They decide they'll give it over to Kerbeck. He's the hip hungry hippo that <laughs> gobbles up this particular kill. And speaking of hungry hippo, we also have that here in Southern California. Yeah, the, there was the a CSL finals. Was, yeah, yeah they they taken two off the sides, so it looked like it was just like a one v one. I mean, it was a competitive tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's all. Oh, now they're just death brushing outside of the brush. And they get it. It's they a little bit of desperation, but yeah, he tries to bounce out of oh, that one. Oh, they brought back Shockwave. They're going to have the passive for this one, but yeah, meanwhile, the redemption's coming down. Leopard left out to dry. The Braum is going to stack on him, and Kerbeck doesn't even need the stack. Just the extra damage from it is going to be just Sly fine Cat. for him. Sly Cat's going to get hit by the ace oh. in the hole, but does get the shield at the right time. Not going to be too worried about that one. Does have to reset, and the problem is that the inhibitor is going to be the target in the meantime. It's the interim. It's what they've been looking to do this entire time. Slycat had to go the distance to back. He's not even back to the base yet. They're going to be able to start hammering away at these towers. There's still 25 seconds on Leopard. The tower is not going to last for 25 seconds. Not in the hands of a Banner of Command minion. So they take that one out in a way. They're going to be able to push back. They don't dare push their luck any further, but 
It's been working out for them thus far. An inhibitor and a nexus tower. Things are getting very, very sticky for the likes of Robert Morris University. You know, despite Robert Morris University being able to pick up the Barons because of this Cassiopeia, they haven't had any wave control in their favor. They've been pushed on both sides, top and oh, bottom, yeah. and then distracted by team fights, so they cannot go answer those uh, properly. But again, that's the advantage of draw of having these two banner commands on Urbana Champagne sides. They can split push both sides without actually having to be there. And if they do get the if they do give up Baron, that means that there's really not much to work with for Robert Morris. They still have to shift all the way back. And even so, Robert Morris is getting decimated after they take the Baron. It's happened two times thus far. So Urbana Champagne, very solid wave control that is working into their favor and equating into a seven uh, a seven uh, seven towers taken thus right. far, not to mention an inhibitor on the top side. Well, not only that, but another factor, another uh, aspect here that I want to touch on with this continuous uh, banner of command prop that they're doing is that they have such tanky members on Urbana Champagne that just by merit of their health bars and how long it takes to kill them and how long they can run through a fight, especially you tie an Ocean Drake into that just to kind of, hey, you know, hey, it's here, it's fun. Um, all that means that these have so much more time to build this pressure, so much more time to just continue to build up and, and break down these towers and really create these advantages across the map. Now, speaking of advantages, there's an advantage on this push into the mid lane. They got the tower down to a close to half, just a tick above. They do want to continue to build out this pressure. They know all they need to do now is basically stall because these super minions are going to continue to flood in to the base through the top side. Bot wave will start building against them, but it should be a pretty easy police, or maybe they proxy it out with Kerbeck on a run. Either way, this mid lane tower, that's where they know they need to keep the focus. And that's also another issue, too. Who goes and clears a banner command minion? It has to be Leopard. Yeah. Because it's immune to magic damage. Oh, there's a the knockup. They're going to pour there's a lot into engage. this one. They forced the Quicksilver Sash out of that one. And meanwhile, it's the Let's Bounce in. No passive. So AK 47 Leopard gets that one for himself. Timmy Tommy, the next target, but I don't think they're going to find him. Zaker on the back line now. They're going to get out with the Realm Warp, but they do leave oh. one critical casualty behind. And that is Yaba experiencing only his second death of the game in 14 casualties. That's no small feat. Meanwhile, the pings are coming down. The minions are still doing work on that last Nexus Tower. Keep in mind, it is not two to defend there, just the one. So they have to be careful from the side of RMU how much they commit to this because those minions are going to start chewing through. They do send Slycat back, and that's, that's going to be enough for now. The timing of that was so pivotal for Robert Morris University. Oh. We're into a pause. First pause of the game. That's actually not bad, by the way. No. Yeah, make it all the way here. But that the timing of that team fight was so pivotal for Robert Morris University because the Elder Drake coming up in 13 seconds. Right. The uh, uh, Jungle Boy, he's coming up in 13 seconds as well. That was huge because yes. now we've already seen how fast Cassiopeia can take uh, take objectives, take Drakes, take Barons. Throw that on the uh, the uh, Elder Drake. Jungle Boy may not be able to get in fast enough to be able to keep uh, to be able to steal that one away. Fair enough. We'll see whether or not that can come to fruition. As you do get the unpause pretty quickly there, they're not too worried about that. And just do fix the uh, the screen issues here. And so now, Elder Drake about 45 seconds away. Jungle Boy spawned back up, and Nova Cloak, the last casualty of the fight to uh, to return here. Yeah, will be just a couple seconds before, so. Once Nova Cloak's back on the rift, we're down to all four or all ten members returning and potentially a Baron startup. They want to make this one happen fast. I think they're still trying to stay ahead of this Jungle Boy thing, but he's already back. We'll see if he can get over the wall in time. This is it. He's going a little early, but he knows the rest of the team is there. Baron goes down. It's the favor of Robert Morris, but look at that. The Glacial Fisher is going to be a lot there. Oh Rampage and Kerbeck is there, but Timmy Tommy's going to go down for this, this one. RMU could get this fight. They kill Kerbeck. This could be bigger. Yaba trying to kite on through. Zaker is there as well. This is not good, actually, for the likes oh, of Illinois is. Urbana Champagne. They're going to lose Yaba here, and these are not short death timer spec as we're into the 50 seconds on Yaba 45 remaining for Kerbeck and that is three members of RMU with the Baron but they have to police their base they still don't have a wave in their favor they have to go back to base they can't act aggressively with this Baron and that's how it's been for the last three Baron I think it's the third Baron that's how it's happened all three Barons the first one is maybe like 
the, the biggest amount they had, uh, biggest chance they had to try to counter uh, mount an offense with the Baron, but still, they're not going to really get too much off of it. But they did get the Elder Drake, which may be more important. Taking that away from Urbana Champagne is so huge with those three Infernal yes. Drakes and, of course, let's not forget the one Ocean Drake. That would have been huge for Urbana Champagne. There would have been no stopping them in the team fights. Nice juicy wave for Leopard here. He's going to feel good. Pulling that one all up for himself. Mowing through it like the AK-47 in his name. Yeah, it's just really tough now for the likes of Robert Morris University to get back on their feet. They get the Baron, and that Baron was a good play. The fight was good, too. It's a sign that, you know, they know they can hang in this game. <laughs> I say they know they can hang. They're up in gold yeah, by a significant is, portion. It doesn't seem like it, but they but are. just the way the pressure's been going, I mean, this is the first time they've been back on the opposing side of the map in so long. I got to give it to their never-say-die spirit here. They're true goonies today, <laughs> and they're going to be pushing through onto maybe their first inhibitor tower. Top lane inhibitors up, and so they're not going to be as concerned. Cho'Gath, so big, he can't actually walk over. Uh, oh. he, he has to clear both traps. <laughs> now, this is the first time they've actually had a wave in their favor. They have two cannon minions on the back lines pressing the attack onto that Nexus turret. Or, I'm sorry, inhibitor turret. That may be enough for Robert Morris to finally make something happen. We do have, of course, Scion here shoving it back to the back lines, but... Oh, Every little catch in some helps. trouble. Yeah, he could actually be really close to death here. They're not going to be able to find it off the max, and, but that is going to be Timmy Tommy going down regardless. They're going to get a buff on the redemption, and are you kidding me? They're breaking open the base now over Bonda Champagne. Illinois, what are you going to do to stop this one? They do have oh, waves that's it. in the top, but look at this. They're going to keep pushing on through. You say that's it. It could be close. Kerbeck is oh still here. God. He has the damage, but look at this. They are coming down so quickly. They know this is the last-ditch effort. Slycat's on the back end of this one, and they're going to get the second turret. Are you kidding? Me, Robert Morris, are you going to do it? Kerbeck says not if I have anything to say about it, but Leopard says yes! What on God's green earth did we just witness, Feck, as 40 minutes, <laughs> 19 to 20, 74k to 69, and on paper it looks great for RMU, but just throughout the game, they there was struggled. No, wow. They struggled that almost, almost that entire match. Every time they got a Baron, they died. <sighs> they couldn't get any Drakes. They took a long time to even get the wave in their, in their advantage, but then... They finally let it build up. Three cannon minions, Baron wow. empowered, and then one of them, uh, Banner Command empowered on top of that, decimates those turrets so quickly. Really did. I had a lot of expectations going into that game. Yeah. I'm sure Illinois, uh, Urbana Champagne, and Robert Morris had a lot of expectations going into this game. Hell, we interviewed Erase right here, who had expectations of 2 0 for, uh, for Urbana. Uh, obviously, Urbana, yeah. None of what we just saw was any measure of my expectation. <laughs> I will say that I did not see the game ending that way. It looked so in the favor of Urbana Champagne, despite the fact that the numbers were still there for Robert Morris. But at the end of the day, the numbers didn't lie. They pulled it with the gold advantage. They still were down in turrets yeah. by the time they won the game, just because they forced through mid, broke it all the way down. This is the least conventional League of Legends win were, I've seen in a long time. They were down in turrets, down in kills, and down in drakes. The only thing they really had was gold <laughs> in their favor, which you know you could say is the most important factor. Sure. Obviously, you want all the wow. gold you can, but uh, it was just the scaling of Robert Morris really kicked in there. Uh, Sly Cat doing so much work, and then of course they finally got the wave. The biggest thing, the waves going in their advantage, it was something they finally got under control. Something they that was playing against them the entire time. And once they did that last Baron, longer yeah, downtimes, longer death timers, I should say, a lot more uh, advantage to be taken whenever you have that Baron. Yeah, they finally got their head above water and were able to really catch their breath, and it turned out to be enough to get them the game. Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give them some time to reset for game number two coming on up here. My name is Kyle Corvus Crow, joined by Joshua Feck as Quest at the desk today. We have more action between Robert Morris University, who leads the series over Urbana Champaign, Illinois, one to zero, coming up after this break. Don't go anywhere.